What's up, Jabroni? Steven here, and welcome to another episode of What We Learn. This time, we're talking about SmackDown Live. And first, I want to say that I apologize for the audio for the Raw yesterday. I was super tired, and I just, the audio didn't sync up right, so I decided to put out the review anyway. Hopefully, you guys still enjoyed it. It was a little bit wonky audio, but I hope you guys were still able to enjoy the review. But now we're talking about SmackDown. Raw was the disappointment. So SmackDown, was it good? Did it do anything to improve the storyline, to prove that it's better than Raw? For most of that, this week's SmackDown, I'm going to say it was an improvement over last week's SmackDown, and it was better than Raw for the most part. So pretty much, let's find out what happened on SmackDown this week. Here we go. So when SmackDown starts this week, we get Bray Wyatt in the ring and already a plus. Bray Wyatt opening a show, thumbs up all the way. I enjoyed the hell out of this segment. Bray Wyatt killing it on the mic, killing it on the mic. He seemed to know exactly what his motivations were. He seemed to know everything that he wanted to do, and I dug it. Out comes Dean Ambrose for some reason. We don't really know why. I mean, he comes out saying that Raw or SmackDown is his show, the people's show, and that Bray Wyatt is just spewing out nonsense and all this other stuff. And I enjoyed the dynamic. It made some sense to me. This small back and forth went on for a little bit until Dean Ambrose starts saying that he's going to go in the ring, but he's thinking with his head this time. He's not just going to go randomly in there. And then out comes Dolph Ziggler, who looks at Dean Ambrose and then runs directly into the ring, into the hands of Bray and Eric Rowan to get beat up. And first off, I mean, it made Dolph look like an idiot, just running in there, getting his ass kicked. But then it also made Dean Ambrose look like an idiot because he went in to help Dolph Ziggler, even though he's been kind of being heelish, giving me some Stone Cold vibes. But then he randomly went in to help Dolph Ziggler. And you would want the guy that you're going to go against to get beat up. So hopefully they address that next week. But nonetheless, this is obviously setting up a tag team match later on in the night. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Next, we get American Alpha in a squash match where they're beating up local talent. Which is weird because they haven't beat up regular talent, but we're going to have them beat up local talent and show off their skills, which again is proving my point that this division is weak. Uh, during this match or before the match, actually the rest of the tag division, except for the Usos, who are obviously hurt, uh, come out. And we have the Vaude Villains, uh, the Ascension, and the Hype Bros. This division is bad. Um, yeah, this division is... I'm just sorry, this division is bad. American Alpha goes over... And um, the uh, people on the outside get in the ring. They all start fighting each other. American Alpha is the last team standing. Damn, this division is bad. Oh my God. Um, yeah, so they're bringing... They kept talking about there's possible rumors of a new belt coming for the tag team. And I guess this is the way of them proving... We want to show that we belong in this fight for the belts. Oh, this division is bad. Um, yeah, so... Literally, when I saw this, the first thing I put on Twitter was, please, Revival. The Revival needs to come. They need to hurry up. We need we need something. Like, this is bad. Like, Zack Ryder looks like he is so upset that he's in a tag team right now. He is so upset from the look of his face. He just looks so defeated right now. He's in the tag team with the Hype Bros and the Vaude Villains who got destroyed last week. And then the Ascension, who are just a joke. This division makes no sense. No sense. I don't understand this division makes no sense. And that is something that we continue to learn every single week is that this division makes absolutely no sense. Like, <laughs> this is, oh God. Oh God. Let's move on. Next, we had Becky Lynch versus Eva Marie. Now, Eva Marie is one of the most hated divas because i'm calling her a diva and she's embracing that in this entire women's division on both raw and smackdown um she comes out gets booed playing up to her what she is and i gotta say that the wwe is handling her very well uh last week she had the injury and then this week she had the like wardrobe malfunction like oh my god she's so clumsy and she showed up like she so doesn't belong there and i'm digging that i like that they're doing that um so it's awesome i enjoyed that uh 
She ends up leaving and then uh, Becky Lynch calls out like an open challenge to anyone. And who comes out is Alexa Bliss. Now, now Alexa Bliss to me is the best women's fighter in this division on SmackDown, uh, right behind Natalia and Becky Lynch. Now, I'm happy. This is what I wanted last week where I said Becky Lynch should be in a rivalry with uh, Alexa Bliss. And that's what it was looking like it was going to be like playing into. Alexa Bliss is really good on the mic or decent on the mic. She's really decent in the ring, um, uh, better than Carmella to me. Um, um, but I really enjoyed this match. I thought it was really good. Uh, then even Marie kind of interrupts the match, um, kind of distracts Becky Lynch. Becky loses, and it's making Becky look really weak. So that sucks. Um, I thought it was a short thing that Becky Lynch was going to guarantee win uh, the belt when it's introduced for SmackDown. But now a part of me believes that maybe they're going to give it to Eva Marie. Um, I feel like Eva Marie is going to win the women's belt for the like be the first woman champion. I have a feeling. I just have a feeling, guys. I really do. I don't know. I have a feeling. Uh, but nonetheless, Alexa Bliss looks strong. Uh, Becky Lynch looks weak. Sorry. Um, Eva Marie, they're working her right, so I dig that. Um, we also had another women's uh, match later on in the night, which was Natalia versus Carmella. Uh, um, both of these are okay. I mean, Natalia's a great fighter. Um, but Carmella is still, to me, her gimmick does not work for me. I don't like it. I feel like she's trying to be Enzo. She's trying to do that whole thing. She's decent in the ring. Even that finish to this match just felt very slow. Um, I'm just not digging Carmella right now. She, I'm not digging it. And I don't think the fans are because when she comes out and she does her thing, nobody really cares. And it's it sucks. It really does suck because she was so good with Enzo and Cass. Um, I hope that they introduce trades into uh the raw smackdown thing later on so we can get you know we can trade some people maybe get nia Jax over here on smackdown or something and give them carmella or something i just some type of trade needs to be able to happen because there's so many people being wasted on raw nia Jax, uh sammy Zayn, cesaro that can really flourish over on smackdown so um yeah this women's division is weak as well as the tag team division and it's kind of sad and kind of sucks next we had a del rio versus randy orton match and the match overall was a really good match they set it up earlier in the day and i was actually getting pretty excited about this because del rio for as much as people don't like him he's actually pretty decent and good in the ring um and randy orton is really good in the ring too so they put on a really good match uh the ending was weird because randy orton uh won by disqualification when del rio hit him with a chair okay but you're you you need to make like, Del Rio is a great fighter, I get it, but you wanted to make Randy look like a monster, like a beast, since he's going against the beast, Brock Lesnar, and you didn't really do that. He has he RKO'd uh, Del Rio when um, the whole, uh, when he was bringing in the chair, but you need to make him look stronger. I'm just saying, make him look stronger, and this was not what you wanted to do for me. Um, so yeah, I was not digging this match, uh, or the ending of this match. I dug the match, but the ending was just kind of wonky for me. Next, we had the amazing Heath Slater moment of the week, where Heath Slater was talking to Rhino, telling him that he really needs his contract. He just got a brand new pool. He has to feed his two kids, or his four kids, or his seven kids. He kept changing the number. I thought it was funny. I was digging it. Uh, Rhino talked about how he just won his like election for um, some type of... Uh, senate or congress or some type of local government or something like that and i thought that was really cool that they brought that in because it shows that rhino's got some smarts um but he just kept changing his thing when they came to heath slater i thought it was funny but in the end heath slater uh and rhino they had their match anyway uh rhino still went over heath slater um heath slater looked pretty good actually i really had fun with this match because Heath Slater actually looked good in this match and Rhino looked pretty good in this match. Uh, then after the match, uh, Daniel Bryan and uh, Shane um, are backstage with a contract talking about that they're going to give Heath Slater the contract because he deserves it. Um, and he reminds them of, of SmackDown where he's a fighter and all this other stuff. And Heath Slater comes back and he's mad and he's saying that SmackDown doesn't deserve his talent and all this other stuff. Dug it, he walked away, and then they're like, well, I guess we got to keep this contract. I had a, I, I'm had, i having fun with the Heath Slater stuff. I think it's cool. Like I said, uh, before the uh, draft, he was doing nothing, so this is really fun. And if we really think about it, where's Curtis Axel? Where is Bo Dallas? Nowhere. Uh, again, more people that could have been amazing. Why couldn't Bo Dallas be on SmackDown? Shit! Damn it. So you guys know how the Intercontinental Championship is the second biggest championship in all of WWE, right? You guys know that, right? So what did they what are they doing with that championship? What are they doing with that championship right now? They're having the Miz do something with Scooby Doo. Yeah. The Miz's segment this week was him getting duped by Scooby Doo, which I get it, promoting the movie, whatever. Um, and then 
him and Maurice laying on desks doing lovey-dovey stuff. Please, we need to get the belt off of him. We need to get the belt off of him. Next, we had a little small thing in the back where Corbin attacked Kalisto, saying that he cost him the Intercontinental uh, number one contendership match. So this is obviously going to be some type of SummerSlam pre-show match. Cool with that. Both of these guys um, deserve something on SummerSlam in the early rounds, so I'm cool with that. Pre-show stuff, throw this in there, throw the Titus and their young thing in there, and I think we have a decently good pre-show. So I'm digging that. Next, we had the main event of the evening where it was the Wyatts versus Ziggler and Dean, and this match was enjoyable. It was fun. Uh, but the Wyatts, again, look weak. Bray looks weak once again where he's talking all this stuff and then he doesn't win in the end. Um, Eric Rowan gets super kicked and it was just one of those where you're like, damn, like you got to make Bray mean something. Bray has to get wins. Give Bray wins so that people fear him. When you don't give Bray wins, then it doesn't make sense like what he's saying. This is my problem with wrestling right now is that the bad guys never win. The only bad guy that's winning, honestly, is Rusev. Um, and that's like awesome because Rusev is constantly proving who he is, but Bray never wins a, a feud he's in. I mean, why? He's the best person on the mic behind Kevin Owens to me. And like, why? It doesn't make sense. Bray needed to win. None, nonetheless, um, Dolph and Dean go over and then they're both celebrating and then Dean uh, gives the dirty deeds to Dolph, which is showing his Stone Cold S type of stuff where he's, Kind of like an in-betweener, not a good guy, not a bad guy, just Dean. Um, so yeah, I'm digging that. I'm digging their rivalry right now. I'm liking it. I'm liking that there's not really a heel or a face in this little rivalry, and it's getting me excited for this um, SummerSlam match. What was surprising was that there was no AJ or John Cena this week, so that was kind of sucky because I really dig their rivalry. But yeah, they weren't on the show this week, so that kind of sucks. But nonetheless, I still enjoyed SmackDown more than I enjoyed Raw this week. And I've been thinking of maybe doing something where we compare the two um, in their own separate show. And actually, Brian Zane just did a video which with like something that I was kind of thinking about doing as well. So since he did it, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it or if I do do it, it's going to be different. But I was thinking about doing something where I compare both shows, see who won and do something like that. But he did it. I really love this video. So maybe I might do something like it, maybe comparing the two shows and pros and cons and stuff like that. So, but nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let me know what other kind of videos you want to watch. Let me know what you thought of SmackDown this week. Was it amazing? Was it shitty? What do you guys think we need to do to make wrestling great again? Screw Darren Young. Make WWE great again. What do we need to do? Pretty much, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back again to talk wrestling when Monday comes around. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.